The drama is on the other side. The better stories in the losing locker room. I've said that from the very beginning. I maintain that to be true. You know, there's a million people lining up to kiss the tuchus of Jason Tatum. But where the story is, is on the Washington side of things. They will now have to play another game. Uh, they'll host Indiana on Thursday, and that is for the right to get to the playoffs. If they lose that game, they're out. See you later. The Wizards actually led the Celtics at halftime. And then, like a crumble cake, they fell apart in the second half. But the big story here, don't bear the lead, my man. Uh, We're not. Uh, Is Russell Westbrook, the phenom, social media, slobber, 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 give me Russ. We love Russ. So they say. All season, we, we had that, especially the second half. He played outrageously well statistically in the second half. But in this particular game, Why was this night different than most nights? Because Russell Westbrook was a mere mortal. Uh, He did not take his cape with him to Boston. So let us discuss the question, what the heck happened to Russell Westbrook? So I've got seatbelt, Achilles heel, and albatross. And we'll put all of these things together into an approvable mal or model. You will approve. And if you don't, you get your money back because you didn't pay any for this. We'll give you your money back. Now, A, Russell Westbrook, uh, to be kind, the alarm went off and he hit the snooze button, right? The alarm went off, snooze. We've all done it. And then when he was playing, especially in the second half, he coughed up a hairball or two. Uh, and it was really from the opening of the game, a very passive performance would be the word uh, to describe how Westbrook played. Uh, he was detached. There was something on his mind, but it it was not particularly the game he was playing in. And uh, this was something we have seen uh, far too often. Now, typically it goes the other way where Russ is out of control. He's like a... uh, uh, you know, an 18 wheeler whose brakes have gone out and you just can't stop it. Uh, you just can't stop him from running uh, towards the basket. Westbrook in this particular game, if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. He put on his helmet. He then fastened his seatbelt and took a ride on the vomit comet, uh, as we like to call it on this show. He sucked at a time. You cannot suck. And Scott Brooks was trying to give him the Heimlich maneuver on the sidelines, it didn't work. Now, if you didn't see the game, you say, well, Westbrook wasn't that far off from what he normally does. He had 20 points. He had 14 rebounds, uh, five assists. That's a little lower than normal. But those numbers are misleading. They don't tell you just how bad he played. Because you have to dig a little bit deeper, right? You pull back the onion, and you're like, wow, I got some tears in my eyes. What what happened? Uh, Westbrook was 6 of 18 shooting the basketball. He was equally bad in the first half and the second half. Three of nine from the floor in the first half. Three of nine in the second half. Now, I mentioned Washington actually led the Celtics by two points in Boston at halftime. They then got run off the court in the second half. And what Russell Westbrook, he had one rebound and uh, as many assists as I had and you had combined in the second half. Bupkis in the assist column. Pathetic. Uh, Bradley Beal, now he's getting a pass on this because it's mostly all about Russell Westbrook, but Bradley Beal uh, was not uh, very good. He's buddy-buddy with Jason Tatum. If you saw the game, that was one of the storylines the production crew came up with at Turner that these guys are from the same area, they've got a background together, and you know, they're playing grab ass after the game and all that. But Bradley Beal was 10 of 25 from the floor. He had 22 points. He wasn't very good. The, the big two, Westbrook and Beal, got outplayed by uh, Tatum. And not just Tatum, though. Uh, Tatum had the 50-burger that he put up, which was uh, outstanding. But Kimball Walker also played well. Uh, that was unexpected for the Celtics. But it, really, it's a bad job by me. I, I knew midway through the third quarter that I had made a mistake with my calculus. Now, I did get it right in the early game, not that, I, not that you care, but I had Indiana uh, in that game. But the, the Wizards, for some reason, I had some faith that the Wizards were going to, to win. I got that wrong, uh, it would appear. Uh, bad logic on my part. Uh, my my thinking on that, though, I expected the Celtics to come out and, and be the woe is me team. Like, woe is me. Oh, we got no chance. Woe is me. 
Jalen Brown, down for the count. He's not going to play. So I was anticipating a pity party, but that didn't happen. Boston came out and patty whacked the Washington basketball team. Uh, and Jason Tatum, he, he had 18 points at halftime. You're like, okay, he's doing fine. Maybe we'll get to 40. And then he went turbo time in the second half, pedal to the metal. Tatum, 32 points after halftime in 20 minutes. And uh, the Celtics ran Washington off the court. So Brad Stevens, the much embattled Brad Stevens, uh, at least for a night, can have a big smile on his face and say, hey, look, we didn't have Jalen Brown. We still won, blew out the the Wizards. Uh, and and his team did get into the head of Russell Westbrook. Oh, I don't know how much of it was the Celtics and how much of it was just something else going on with Russell Westbrook. He was lackadaisical and uh, KO'd by an old Achilles heel. Uh, Westbrook was anything outside the painted area is a weak spot for Russell Westbrook. You don't have to be an NBA scout to know this. You just have to have uh, working eyeballs or eardrums. Uh, Russ was 0 of 4 from three-point range. That's actually pretty good. He only took four three-point shots. The only shots he made were literally at the rim or in the painted area. And outside of three feet from the basket, Westbrook was 1 of 8 uh, from the floor in this particular game. And so the drum beat continues. All right, the drum beat continues. All right, last word on this. So really this game for Washington was a refresher course. It's a reminder of what we already knew, a playoff Westbrook, right? And there's many that worship Russell Westbrook because they slobber all over statistics. But this was this is one of the last guys that you want in the bunker in a big spot. Right now, hey, listen. If I wanted to win a fantasy basketball championship, he would be the first pick. Russell Westbrook. He's your MVP. Absolutely. If you need to fatten up your stat sheet, that's the guy. He's a Hall of Famer as a stat bandit, Russell Westbrook. But in the postseason, his game is an albatross, uh, and that was on display against the Celtics. Now, it doesn't mean he's not going to come back. And Indiana is not a very good team, and the Washington could, could win. Although. From what I just witnessed, I would highly doubt it. Uh, but Westbrook doesn't strike me as what you would classify as a winning type player. Because he's he's either one of two things in the playoffs. He's either out of control where he can recklessly shoots the basketball when he can't shoot from the outside. Or he's the opposite. He's aloof where like he just kind of not really there, which is what happened in this particular game on a, on a Tuesday night in the play-in game. Either way, either you're out of control and you've got nothing going on right and you're hurting your team that way or you're, you're just kind of going through the motion. You're a liability. Uh, and uh, he was mentally checking out in this game, raising the, right, the white flag. And Westbrook, you know, he huffed and puffed. He stormed off the Wizards bench and he went to the locker room with about six minutes or so to go in the game. He bailed on his teammates. Was he hurt? The, the Wizards said he wasn't hurt. Scott Brooks uh, was asked about that, said that's not the case. Uh, did he have to go to the porta potty? Did he have uh, Did he have the Tennessee trots? Doesn't appear that dysentery was a uh, factor. Uh, we, we know that the alibis will continue to roll in because Westbrook, with a certain segment, uh, has no faults. It's never his fault. It's uh, the Russ apologist have an excuse for everything. Uh, he, he, it's not his fault. It's this guy's fault, and that guy's fault, and Scott Brooks is a boob again. Uh, but the way I look at it, Westbrook's got plenty of culpability. And the bottom line is Westbrook, as a playoff performer with multiple teams now, he's bounced around the NBA with Oklahoma City, the Rockets, and now the Wizards. Uh, one game with Washington, but – in the, in the in not even a playoff game. This doesn't even count as a playoff game. But if you look at his playoff numbers, his rebounds, assists, shooting percentage, all worse in the postseason than the regular season. And now he has another opportunity uh, Thursday against the Pacers to get into the playoffs. Uh, and which Westbrook will show up? Will it be the out of control Westbrook, or will it be the uh, the Westbrook just kind of going through the motion? Right. Now, I, I love the statement they were making on TNT. They're like, well, you know, star players don't normally have two bad games in a row. Okay, yeah, yeah. Bet all of your money. Bet your mortgage that, that that's going to be the case. That, oh, no, 
Because he can even play a little bit better, but the problem with Westbrook also is the end of game situations. The last couple minutes, if it's close, it wasn't this game was not close. The game was over. The game was decided by the final couple of minutes. But if it's close, you don't want him out there, Westbrook, because he's going to kill you because he can't shoot from the outside and he keeps shooting from the outside late in games. 